Okay, to begin with, this is uh, the review for the test. I know it seems amazing, but you've been gone for several days and we're coming back. At least we have one day of review for a test. It's not just boom, here's the test. Uh, but we have a lot to cover. So here's the main things you can find. It says in the equation to the right, which actually is above, which is that one, okay, what is the initial height? Well, first of all, it gets at can you write an equation? I can. Can you? Do you get that this is always the same? if we're on Earth, because that's based on gravity. All right. What's this number right here? The velocity, the upward velocity at which you are throwing the item, or ball, or stick, or fish, or whatever you're throwing in the air. Why would you throw a fish? I don't know. Um, that, oh, I guess blue isn't the best color for that. That right there, the end number there, is the starting height. So do you get it starting at a height of 180 inches? Mm, but it's not inches. I lied to you on purpose. What is it? It's got to be in meters because this is in meters. That other one would have to be in meters also. 180 meters up. What on earth starts up that high? Well, maybe you're at the top of a cliff. In the old days, instead of fireworks uh, in Hawaii, they, would, uh, they didn't have fireworks. So they wanted to make a cool light show at night. They would have a fire way up high on a cliff over the ocean, and then they would toss big boards that were on fire up in the air at night and you'd see them tumble down uh, and if they would like hit some rocks and stuff, if you think about it, that would like shake off debris like embers and it'd look really pretty as it was like cascading down into the ocean below. Uh, that was the way they did celebrations in Hawaii. So let's say that you're 180 feet up on a cliff uh, and you're tossing this big board over that is, you know, burning uh, and now you're going to like figure out, okay, I tossed it at 5.6. That must be in meters per second. And then it'll tell me where it is, like what was the initial height? I know that. It'll tell me it, where it is at any given time. I can tell the initial velocity is right there. And I can tell the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So these two get destroyed. And the y-intercept is the same as the starting height. Does that all make sense to you? Okay, I got a new problem that's very similar. This is a kid standing in the parking lot throwing a ball up in the air. Why is it going from three feet up? Because he's standing in the back of his truck bed, and he is, meters, sorry, and he is standing on the top of his truck bed, and he is throwing a baseball up in the air, okay? And how fast was he throwing it? Seven meters per second. Good. And what was his starting height? Three meters. And what would the y-intercept be? Three. Because the y-intercept is where x is zero. So these first two terms are gone. All right. So next, what if I had you put that in a calculator to figure out exactly where the ball was at a given time? Would you please put that in your calculator right now? Everybody. I'll pause for a second while everybody gets that in there. Okay, so I've got this in my calculator, and I hit graph, and my graph is zoomed in a weird spot, so I can't see this very well. Now, first thing I would do is do the standard zoom, which is zoom 6. Zoom 6, it's really quick and easy to do, and poof, my graph looks a little more normal. But I hope you get, you have to be able to see the important spots on the graph, otherwise you won't be able to do these steps. Okay, so this was a kid throwing a baseball up in the air from the back of his truck. How high is the highest it went? Everybody use second calculate, try to figure it out. Remember, you gotta go to the left of it, to the right of it, and right on top of it. I'm gonna pause for a second, we give that a try. Actually, I'm gonna ask you to find three things, and then I'm gonna give you some time to do it. I want you to find the max height, and this goes with it, what time did the max height happen? Max height was this, the time it happened was that. They are at the same spot. They are at that maximum spot. Then I'd like you to figure out where, where was the ball at 0.5 seconds. Notice that's not one second, that's 0.5 half of a second. 
That, I'll give you a hint, is under, not maximum, but value. You're going to do second calculative value. And the last one is when, notice I'm not saying where, when did the ball hit the ground? And anybody tell us what that's called on the calculator? The zero. Good. Find those three places. If you can do those three things, I have hope for you that you can at least get a C on this test because that's the basic basics. Okay. All right. I'll pause for a second. We'll give that a try. Okay. Here we go. Here's how you would do these. Maximum height. I'm doing second. Calculate. Don't talk now, please. Second. Calculate, which is right above the... Uh, the trace button there. Second, calculate the maximum. That's number four. And this is really important. It's asking a question. It says left bound. I am to the left of it. I hit enter. Now right bound. I get to the right of it. I hit enter. The third question, it says guess. See, the questions are appearing right there. And guess means guess where it is. I think that that's where it is. I hit enter, and it says 0.714 and 5.5. Now you got to interpret. Is 0.714 the height, or is 5.5 the height? 5.5 is the height. What is 0.714? The time. Very good. And we also should not leave bare answers. 0.714 seconds. I could agree with 0.71 if you wanted to round there, or even 0.7 because it didn't say where to round. Height, 5.5 meters. You don't want to have a bare answer. Bald answer, actually, is what it's called. All right. Where was the ball at 0.5 seconds? Second, calculate value. That's number one. It's apparently used a lot. 0.5 is our time, and it'll say, oh, it was at 5.275 meters. Okay. And the last thing, yes, question? It says, where was the ball at 0.5 seconds? I'm on the next question now. All right, and then the third question, when did the ball hit the ground? That's a different place. That's right there. And it looks like it's really close to two seconds, but not quite. So how do you find it? You go second, calculate the, which one is this? The X, there's no X intercept, but there is a zero. So you choose the zero option. Now this is the weirdest one, because it says to the left of it, but in the case of a parabola that's upside down, you are to the left of it if you're right here, you're also above it. So to the left and above, you hit enter. And then to the right, and in this case, below, left and right, and then right on top of it, close enough, enter. And there it is. Zero is at 1.77. Again, does this mean that I get 1.7 cookies out of this somehow? No. What does 1.7 have to do with anything? That's how many seconds it was at when what happened? When the height was zero, when it hit the ground. So it hit the ground at 1.77 or 1.8 seconds. All right, if you feel pretty good about that and you feel like you got this mastered, then you're pretty in good shape for tomorrow, but you're not completely there. There's a couple other little things. One would be, you would you agree that at, at some point this ball was at four meters off? Wait a minute, let me clarify. Yeah, it was at four meters off the ground. So the question would be, would you agree that there were two times that the ball was four meters off the ground? Once on the way up, and then once on the way down again. Anybody have a genius way to figure out where those two places are? And you can't just use trace. No, that won't work. Yes. Make another equation, she says. If we're wanted, when the height is four, make another equation where there's going to be a line going through at four. That'll tell you the two spots where it touches. How do I do a line for height of 4? Well, the y is 4. If I go to this, say y is 4. Thank you for knowing that. Yay. Now I hit graph. Now this one is a little trickier because it's an intersect one. We haven't done many of these. I did, I think, one yesterday or, or last time we met, which was a long time ago. Second, calculate. Intersect, which is number 5. Uh, this one, I, what I'd recommend is you get really close to it right off the bat and then just hit enter, enter, enter. And then jump to it and it's 0.16. And wait a minute, and the other one's 4. Oh, I guess I knew it was going to be 4. 
right? So then what's this 0.16? Do I get 1 16th of an ounce of water? No, it has nothing to do with that. What is 0.16? Seconds. 0.16 seconds after it launched, it hit 4 meters. Okay, what's the other time? Everybody go to the other spot and double check that you and your partner both can tell me the other time when it was at a height of 4. The other time's over here. So the other one was at second, calculate, intersect, it's number five. Then I get really close. You can either arrow to the right, you can arrow down, whatever it takes you to get there. Don't talk, please. And I, shh, I have arrowed over to be, gentlemen, watching, just watch. See how I'm getting really close to it? After I hit second, calculate, intersect, I get really close to it. Then I hit all three enters right in that same spot, and it jumps to the intersection point of... 1.26 and 4. So therefore, the time was at 1.26. Did you get 1.26? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Any questions? Any questions on how to do any of those several things we just went over? Oh. When did the ball hit the ground? That gave me a time that I was supposed to, like not a time, sorry. It gave me a height I was supposed to hit. As opposed to before, when I give you a time, you use second calculate value. If I give you a height, I'm giving you a y. So you type in y equals whatever the height is. Yes? Yep. Okay, say that again. Ah, uh, yes, there are two times. And you can just write them as two separate times. If you put a comma between them, it sort of implies they're a point. Anytime somebody gives me something like this, I think they mean the point two comma five go together, and I don't want that. So just write them as two separate things. Time this, time that. For the two times. All right. So on this, when it says describe your window, all you have to do is after you get the graph on your screen, you just hit the window button and you copy what's there. There are lots of different answers that are right. You don't always have to be have the same window as other people. But everybody, see if you can get this in your calculator. And here's the important thing. Make sure you can see the top and make sure you can see the zeros. Yep, the bottom of it, right where it touches the x-axis. Do you want to see the maximum or you want to see the zeros? There's a lot of windows that would work. But you'll have to adjust your window so you can see it. Once you can see it, sketch it and write down your window numbers, which is as simple as hit window button and copy what it says for X max, X min, Y min, and Y max. I'll pause for a second while you give that one a try. Okay, let's say that I had a kid graph theirs and they said that it looked like that. That is right. I mean, granted, the graph goes down on both sides, but do you get if this is like a ball tossed in the air? Only that part really would matter. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to say you needed to copy it that way. Let's say you have it this way. How do I tell if you did, did it right or not? What if they said that their x min and their x max was like negative 10 to positive 10? That seems believable. What if their y min was like negative 10 and their y max was like positive 10? Now I know they're lying because... They couldn't have possibly had that window and seen this graph. Why? What number is screwed up for sure? Yes. The Y max. Yeah, because our, we have to get up to over 180 to be able to see the top. 180 is right there. So I know their Y max has to be at minimum like 200-ish. I don't know, maybe it's 250. But like their Mac, their, their, I can tell that they didn't really graph it then. Because wouldn't all of you know? that generally the graph kind of looks like this. I mean, think about it. It's got to be an upside down parabola, right? So anybody could sketch a graph like that. So how can I tell if you actually did it for real? I'll be able to check by having you write down your window 
and then I'll know for sure that you actually got a picture that looked like this. Okay, so all you got to do is copy what it's your Windows button says. Hit Window, copy down what it says for YMIN, YMAX, etc. Okay, but this really is testing. Can you move the window around so you can see things that aren't like really simple and obvious ones? All right, let's move on to the next thing. How would you find the maximum height? That's the vertex, but they're not going to say second calculate vertex. You're going to do second calculate maximum. Good. How would you find when the object hits the ground? That's a zero. If you're taking notes, that might be smart for studying tonight. It's up to you. If you've already got these all nailed down, awesome. How would you find when the object would have a height of 200? Ah, we just did that a second ago. No, it's not a value one. Y equals 200. Do you get if you had done X equals 200, you would be telling it that the time was 200? That would be bad. They told us that the height is 200, so you have to say Y equals 200. That's the kind where you graph a second line. You do second calculate intercept. Next one, find the height at two seconds. What's that one? Second calculate value. If they give you the time, you want to say value, X equals. All right. That is all we have as a review for today, and there's a review worksheet. I strongly recommend you do all of it, uh, and there's also a review quiz. For those of you that are nervous because you just bombed the last test that we had, like there's probably six people in here right now. They got an F on the last test. Okay, if that's you, you really need to spend more time than the other people because you didn't understand it terribly well the first time. Now, granted, you have a calculator to do it. It makes it a lot easier. but if you're weak on this stuff, I strongly recommend that you go and do the Schoology quiz that's in there. And it won't be counted against you if you do badly, but it's extra practice problems for you if you want them. Okay? I'm assigning all the homework as usual on the day before the test. And I want to leave you with the rest of the time to work. Do anybody have last questions that might be helpful for the video? Okay, then I will stop the video there. That's all I have for you for today. Good luck on the test tomorrow.